can I ask the final speaker in today's morning session, which is uh, Andrea Pulisi on thermodynamic limits of sperm swimming precision. Yes, okay. So can you see the screen now? Yes, just a second. I'm just going to mute this person. Right, there we go. Yes, we can see your screen and we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, so thanks for the opportunity to, to speak, and I wish also to, to, to thank the, 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 the collaborators, which are uh, Roberto Di Leonardo, Claudio Maggi, Benita Nat, Viridiana Carmona Sosa, and Filippo Sal Salimbeni. So I'm going to discuss and show you some results, some experimental results about uh, sperm beating precision and its thermodynamic limit. For the reason, I'm going to introduce to you um, the two main actors of this uh, small talk, which is uh, the, um, the sperm cell and uh, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. Okay, so um, the, the sperm cell is a very fascinating uh, biological system. Here you can see a nice animation um, created by Ex Vivo and the group of Daniel and Castro in, uh, in Dallas. And inside the tail, uh, there are uh, um, nine doublets of microtubules, and there are uh, a very uh, packed arrangement of molecular motors, which are called dinains. Um, there are roughly, uh, for a tail of 50 microns, uh, a number of the order of 10 to the 5 motor domains, which uh, um, actuate the flagellum. And here you can see freeze fracture electron microscopies um, pictures, uh, which show you the very regular and packed arrangement of uh, these um, molecular motors, these proteins, uh, which uh, actually are so close that they really need to interact with each other. And uh, uh, of course, there are uh, several proposed mechanisms to understand how the way that this molecular some kind of uh, spontaneous coordination creates the the wave beating that so the traveling wave that make the sperm uh, swim so the other actor of this talk is the thermodynamic uncertainty relation uh, uh, you basically measure in your uh, um, non-equilibrium system any kind of current you measure for instance in the steady state which is the simplest case you measure its average and its diffusivity. You uh, define a precision rate, which is the ratio between the square of the J divided by D. And this precision rate uh, is bound as an upper bound, uh, which is uh, the content of the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. This upper bound is the entropy production rate, uh, which uh, you can uh, uh, compute in the simplest case of uh, isothermal motors as the ratio between uh, uh, the in power injection divided by KBT. And there are, of course, several um, uh, derivation of this result in several different conditions and generalization, et cetera, et cetera. So the literature is very wide in, the, in this direction. And of course, the molecular motor, like the DNAIN, is one candidate for uh, checking how good uh, is this estimate by this bound. And so, for instance, there is this recent paper um, on Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. Where the authors um, used the Markovian models for several molecular motors, such as the DNAIN, using empirical transition rates to compute the precision and to check how the uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation is uh, satisfied, how, how well is satisfied, I mean, how close the bound is. And they found, for instance, that the DNAIN is semi optimized in the sense that the precision with respect to its bound uh, uh, is 20 to 50% in, uh, in uh, cell, cellular conditions. Okay, so now the question is uh, how to go from the molecular motors to a mesoscopic system, and this is in the in a recent wave of studies uh, where uh, several different uh, mesoscopic systems have been studied, like uh, flagella or cilia, and usually the first step is to reduce uh, this the complex phase space of shapes into a few degrees of freedom, like the main coefficients of the um, the principal components that describe the shape. In this way, you can reduce and measure some kind of current current in a, in a limit cycle. Uh, so for instance, the, the sperm um, shape cycle, which is uh, roughly a traveling wave, not exactly the one I'm, uh, I'm showing here, 
but uh, I mean, not so far from this one, particularly close to the tail, there is not, um, not a lot di of difference between uh, idealized traveling, harmonic traveling wave and, uh, and the sperm traveling wave. And you can uh, basically represent the, the shape cycle into the cycle of these two coefficient A and B, which uh, uh, basically move in this plane. And there is uh, so a rotation of a phase. And this is basically the macroscopic counterpart of the motor limit cycles, okay? The DNAIN is chemically doing uh, uh, transitions uh, in a network of states, uh, which of course uh, is not exactly a limit cycle, it's more complex, but still it's uh, uh, dominated most more or less by, by a, a, a main cycle. And uh, of course, if you want to then check and verify the, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation, you need also an estimate for the power injection rate in the, so the consumption of energy for the sperm. And so, uh, for instance, you can get estimate considering that at each uh, hydrolysis of ITP, you get 10, 20 kBT, and then uh, you have an order of magnitude of the given by the frequency of beating and the number of motors you have. And so in the end, you get estimates which are very close to what is experimentally measured in uh, experiments where, for instance, uh, ATP molecules are fluorescent uh, um, dyed. And, and so it is possible to, to see the real depletion of ATP uh, near sperm cells. And of course, this is also close to the estimate of energy that you need to swim, which is this is the Taylor formula for swimming with a given frequency F, amplitude A, length L, and the viscosity of the fluid A, eta. So coming to our experiment, um, basically we microfabricated uh, cages, small cages that you can probably um, barely see in these uh, photographs at the microscopes by two photon polymerization setup in the laboratory of uh, Roberto Di Leonardo. And uh, the sperm cells easily and spontaneously go and uh, remain trapped into the cages. And uh, we, uh, with this um, trick, it is much easier to track the motion of the, the tail. It's, it's reduced to a planar movement, and uh, there is no motion of the, almost no motion of the, of the center of mass. You can basically track just the, 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 the shape of the, of the tail, and uh, you can reconstruct uh, um, basically the, the, the limit cycle uh, based upon the two main coefficients of the two main modes of beating. Okay, and you can really see this is uh, experimental data. You can really see the the, the cycling of the face uh, representing the shape that beats. Okay, and then you can do this for several sperm cells. We analyze more than fifty, and we get uh, uh, the theta in time so that an average of the current and the diffusivity can be computed. And in the end, you can measure the precision, the precision rate that I told you before. And the maximum that you can find for the very the most precise cells is of the order of 10 to the 2 hertz. And this number is uh, has two important um, comments. Uh, first, it is much smaller than uh, the bound given by thermodynamic uncertainty relation of the order of 10 to the 5 uh, smaller. And it's quite close to the single DNAIN motor precision. So we insisted to see uh, if the thermodynamic uncertainty relation has any meaning, even if the first observation is not very encouraging. But we decided to um, uh, seal the box where the sperm cells are in order to make them suffocate, in order to, to make an oxygen deprivation experiment. The oxygen is uh, depleted and the cells are going to die. And this is seen in a few hours, the beating frequency decays quite uh, strongly. And uh, the current and the diffusivity change, and the precision it, it is seen to decay. And if we put the maximum precision uh, um, observed in time over uh, the uh, energy consumption rate, which is estimated by the frequency through the Taylor formula, we get quite a good agreement with a constant factor. So the the it is sort of uh, um, the precision. Uh, res um, fulfills a kind of thermodynamic uncertainty relation with a constant. Um, this constant, uh, um, coincidentally, is of the order of the number of motors inside the, the tail. So um, we took a bit seriously this uh, coincidence, and we, um, we decided to propose a possible conjecture where basically there is this, this number is a kind of uh, correlation length measured as a number of motors which are strongly correlated. And if you um, 
think uh, of a chain of motors, um, of N motors, um, which um, um, are coupled and correlate for some length, you can easily, um, I mean, uh, argue that uh, uh, the, 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 the correlation length enters as the ratio between uh, the maximum, the bound, and the precision uh, of, the, of the system. Um, so we try to, to see if in the literature there were um, uh, thank, there were uh, results uh, um, in, the, in this direction, and we uh, reconsidered experiments with um, sperms in other conditions, as well as with the flagella of the chlamydomonas alga, which are made of the same structure. There are axonems exactly as the sperm tail. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is the, the result of this, uh, uh, this attempt of, of a collapse of very different data with different lengths. Okay, and we found, uh, I mean, uh, um, I would say um, decent agreement. Then what we need, needed, this is the, the, the last slide, is um, a model which would support this, uh, I mean, quite uh, uh, bold conjecture, I think. And so we reconsidered the, the, the model by Ulrich and Prost like 25 years ago for a minimal motor model. Uh, in this model, uh, you have a potential, we see fixed, um, which represents the bending potential in, uh, in, the, in the, so elastic potential, for instance, in the tail of the sperms. And there, is, there are N motors which can attach or detach um, to, the, to the backbone of the of the flagellum and there are also external forces so the the model is is described by the states of the n motors zero detached and one attached and on the relative position between the chain of motors and the backbone which is x and which fulfills a, a simple dynamical equation uh, following a gradient uh, motion with respect to this potential but where only the attached motors are important and then um, there are transition rates to, the, to decide if the motor is attached or detached based also upon the, the, the local potential. And this, uh, this, in this way, you can break the tail balance and you can really create a limit cycle here. For instance, you can see the limit cycle in the position and the total force. And you can measure how the phase correlation decays in order to, to obtain an estimate of the uh, diffusivity. And you can measure the precision. And then we decided to modify this model adding a binding potential between the motors. So the motor are, um, the, the, the probability to attach or detach is enhanced um, depending on the states of the motor nearest neighbors, okay? With this factor K, with this parameter K. And then you can get again a, a limit cycle and you realize that you get a, a much stronger noise. The phase, the correlation is much faster. And in the end, you can measure the precision of this model, the, the thermodynamic precision, and how it scales with them. And you can see that if there is no coupling between the uh, nearest neighbor motors, if K is equal to zero, the precision increase with N. Okay, this happens because uh, the, the fluctuations of the motors are basically independent. Okay, so the diffusivity scales as one over M and the precision increase with N. But what happens when the motors are coupled, um, when K is equal to 10, for instance, you discover that the precision is of order one always as apparently how we observe for the precision of the sperm beating. Okay, so this is all, and uh, thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? We're going to move directly into the discussion. So um, sure. questions here, and then we'll bleed into questions for other people. Um, Peter Ryan? Yes, I, I was just wondering whether the fact that these motors share a load, could that not couple them? Yes, in fact, uh, um, it is a bit tricky, this fact, because uh, this uh, is exactly um, what is uh, already in the model, in the original model. They, they, the transition rates, so the, the fact that they attach and detach depends mm -hmm. on the local potential. So in a sense, it is... Uh, so. The, it is already in the original model, this dependence on the local, for instance, the local bending. Okay, mm -hmm. so the, 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 the importance of the load. And so, um, but apparently this new ingredient is something different. I mean, it is a sort of direct coupling. Mm -hmm. The direct coupling make them more coupled and the precision get much more lower for this, for this kind of coupling. It's like uh, in, in the first case, you have a, a coupling, an indirect coupling by the average. So the average is modulated in space. Uh, 
and the transition rates depend on space. So there is a kind of coupling, okay? But then you are also trying to couple the, the, the fluctuations rather than mm -hmm. the average. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, Udo? Yeah, hi, Andrea. Uh, this is really fas fascinating. Um, I mean, it's it's a very important question to see how the uncertainty relation uh, behaves for, for larger and larger systems. And with Timor Kuyo, we recently looked at a um, driven lattice gas also as a function of the number of particles. And the upshot was that the two remains of order one if the current scales as the number of particles. So my question here is, I mean, how does how does your current, which you observe and whose fluctuations you're looking at, how does that scale with n? In the in the model where we have a full control of n, the actually the current is uh, very weakly depending. Right, on right. The and then it's and then it's no surprise that the tour ratio is really bad, right? Yes. Uh, probably yes. This is a, this is a difference. So I think I mean that's my understanding of 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 this uh, large n limit. You need to look at a current which is proportional to the number of degrees of freedom which are driven. Yeah. Do you think this can be related to the way they are coupled? I mean, if they are coupled conservatively, maybe the current is less dependent than than if. Well, I mean, in in, in our lattice gas, the couple the coupling among the I mean, this was just hardcore and some next nearest neighbor uh, interaction, and the driving was just an external field. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, it, it certainly may be related to to the coupling. I mean, your your last graph here on the, on the right bottom somehow seems to indicate that you could change the behavior as a function of n depending on the coupling, right? I will look into the, this paper. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Cool. So 